Welcome to Not A Real Artist, a podcast by me, Iris Fritchie Cousins. And me, Tamara Sagadevan, discussing relatable creative topics with honesty and humor. Art is such a good teacher, and I keep applying what I learned in art in other areas. And in this case, I'm talking about focusing on the process and in the middle and the messy middle and just allowing it to be messy and trusting that it'll be somewhat fun on the other side. Settle in for season three. We thought you might have had enough of just listening to the two of us. And so we are inviting guests this season to have interesting conversations with. And we are super excited about our first guest. Tamara, can you tell me a little bit about what you think of our guest? Where do I start? I have called her the Beyonce of mixed media arts and journaling. And I think that is a very strong statement (laughs) and I stand by it. She is exceptional. She is one of the most interesting bloggers. Yeah, Iris and you too. And the best thing about her, and she can disagree with me. Oh, is that she's South African. She is South African. Yes. Come on. Oh my God. I was going to wear my rugby jersey and I was going to put my South African flag over my shoulders. But like Miha said to me, stop being extra. Just you guys, your accent is enough. So uh, what do you think about our our next, our new guest, latest guest? Okay, so I, I always have like such a fangirl kind of uh <laughs> Um, a reaction. I mean, I don't know why I get it with her and not with other people, but then, and then, uh, you know, like she wants to talk to me and like wants to be my friend. I'm like, what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so fangirl reaction um, she's like the best ever and so inspiring does some really really awesome things for our kind of online art community and ah I should have prepared this better with more exciting adjectives and stuff yeah we suck we invited somebody (laughs) to be a guest we haven't cleaned our houses we haven't got food you know just come have some cigarette ash and leave (laughs) All right, so we're talking as if people don't actually know who this is, but obviously her name is on the title of the episode, so <laughs> let's... Oh, uh... but can we still do like a drum roll? Like, Oh brrr. yeah, drum roll. Do I pop out of the box? Yes, yeah, yeah, pop out, like jack out, <laughs> out of the box. <laughs> Put your clothes back on. It's Kaylee Gray, everyone. Yay! Okay, so I am never not going to be starting my day with this introduction from now on, because <laughs> it's a... It's the best. Uh, Beyonce, that's, yeah, no, I, I quite like that. And I also really like that you didn't clean your house before I came because my life motto is always that I want other people to be okay with me going into their unclean houses because I want people to come into my house and not have to clean. Like it's way better when there are no pretenses or anything like that. Uh, but I'm really excited to be here. Yay. And it's nice though, though as well. It's like if people are comfortable with you, then you're going to have a much more real conversation, relationship, etc. Oh yeah. Put put all the pretenses aside. It makes it much more interesting. Okay, so I want to get right into it. I want to talk about body. Body, 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 body. <laughs> right into it. Is that what that song's saying? I thought it's saying I thought it was singing about alcohol. It is saying body, right? Yeah, it is saying body, but I don't know. <laughs> oh, I missed the whole month. I could have been seeing that. Yeah, so you're talking about body of art. Yes. Right. It's the class that went out to get messy uh, recently, and it was taught by me. Um, and it was a class that had been on my heart for years. And finally, I thought, okay, I'm ready to get naked in front of other people and and do it. And I'm specifically interested in this Uh, idea of body like what does that mean to you both in terms of art and in terms of like your own body and your body how it exists in society and stuff so I think that being an artist has given me a lot of permission and one of the permissions it's given me is the permission to just say oh yeah I'm an artist so that's how it is so if I feel like wearing clothes that don't match I can say oh, I'm just, you know, it's because I'm an artist and that's why uh, I wear clothes that don't match or that's why I want to wear weird makeup or that's why I don't want to brush my hair. You know, like just think, it just gives me permission to do things that society has always told uh, us is not okay. In particular with my body, 
society has taught us so many ways of seeing our body, taught us so many things that we're not enough, that we're too much, that we're too big, too small. Um, and I've been all of the twos and I'm so tired of that. And so I thought I would take a lesson from my art and from my art journal and just see my body as art, give myself permission for it to be art itself, um, to see it as an artist, to live in it as an artist, because the ways that society has been teaching me is like not, it's not enough. It's not, it's not aligning with me. It doesn't make me feel good. And so I'm going to do it the way it feels good. So if we see our bodies as art itself, they become so much more interesting. And then it's less of, oh, they're too big. Oh, they're whatever they are. And it's just like, oh, there's a really cool pattern over here. Or there's something really interesting over here. Uh, and, and there's less judgment. And I think this is especially if you're the type of artist who arts to get it out, you know, rather than an artist who's trying to sell their work or get it on a gallery wall. Um, but you're able to translate that interest uh, and focus on details. And I think that that's very freeing in your own body. That's amazing. That I'm like, I'm, huh, I'm having a, like, I just did a, a head exploding motion um because i think what you're saying is is that at the same time you're going more into your body you're actually like creating a connection rather than just this thing that is walking around allowing you to like make a cup of tea or you know talk the talking that you want to do it's actually something that you're then connecting more with on a deeper level but at the same time you are using that process to shed the things that have been hung onto your body uh, either like physically but mostly like um, emotionally societally uh, and have a real connection with what your body is to you um, instead of you know all these hang-ups or these internalized um, uh, judgments of like my body's too big or it's too squidgy or too like I don't know all of the words I, mean, I don't think people need uh, yeah. help uh, help thinking of all the things that you know, we've been told. I really like the part about pattern. So I saw a piece of the art and I'm quite sure that it was indicating the patterns in stretch marks. And when I saw it, I knew immediately what it was. And I thought, I have not been in touch with my stretch marks. And I have many for so long because I just started glossing over it because I knew that to look at it would be too painful because of what it meant. And when I saw that and I thought, geez, like this is literally someone's stretch marks and it looks cool. I wish that I could do that and I want to do something like that. And it really, just seeing that one picture just changed so much for me so quickly. And of course, I might have to learn the lesson again, but it was really powerful, Kaylee. And like just speaking as someone who hasn't done the course, but has seen the content, um, it's amazing. Also want to say I saw somebody else's work and I'm sorry for not giving them credit, but they had a picture of a kidney in there and that hit me too because body for me is always my physical outer appearance, but I thought, geez, I've been hating on my kidneys too, you know? It was it was really slightly emotional when I saw that picture because I thought, well, thank you for the hard work that you, and it does work hard, thank you for the hard work that you do and it's just so it's such a new way to look at it because when we say body I think we always think about the outer you know uh, how how like Iris said how big we are how squidgy we are how smaller we should be um so yeah it was very cool to see that my question is have you seen from the people who participate in your in your courses have you seen a similar reaction from them the reason I'm asking is because I know that it can be very difficult to confront those things and I'm interested in if other people are as comfortable as we are, it's uncomfortable, but eventually you get comfortable with the process. I just, I'm always interested in knowing how other people feel about confronting body. Mm. Well, it's been an interesting course because by, by default, we're sharing less. Um, and there's less photos for this course compared to other courses on Instagram, right? Because it is so vulnerable. Um, and my thing throughout the class is always just to be brave within your own limits and just be brave with yourself first of all because uh there's a part that's sharing that's 
a different type of brave to looking at yourself in the mirror. Uh, and so the people that have shared, it's been so interesting. And always with our classes, it's it's fascinating to to get all the different points of view. You talking about kidney, I, I love it. Kid, like your internal organs are your body too. And we, our society teaches us that the only thing that's important is what your body looks like. Um, but that's so boring compared to how it works and how it moves and how you live in it and and the eccentric, eccentrics of it and the quirks of it. Um, and I remember there was a Messi and her name is Brenda and she's actually also South African uh, and she's wonderful. And she says she's very logical. And so she was struggling with the abstract part of it which is interesting to me because as soon as anything is hard, then I make it as abstract as possible and then it's easier to deal with. But for her, she's very logical. And she said when she heard of body, she thought about the cells of your body. Um, and so she wasn't thinking about stretch marks or uh, shapes uh, and and the ways that I was thinking of my body. She was thinking about the, the cells and the freaking mitochondria, okay? And I was like, oh my goodness. Those patterns, just your cell patterns, are so interesting. And um, I think that's a way of being brave is if you – I don't think there are many people out there that can just look in the mirror and go, whoa, that's that's like some hot-ass art, right? <laughs> There's not a lot of us that can do that. Um, and so looking at details or kind of cropping the picture – is a way to do it. And it's the same when you're looking at a piece of art. Uh, if you think of looking at an oil painting in a museum, you go up close and you see the brush strokes and you just, just the way that we as humans take in art is such a fantastic way to take in your body and to be in awe of your body. I just love, I love it. And I think also I wanted to talk about, I think it was Iris was talking about, talking about glassing over your body. And I think that is how I have always processed my body is to gloss over it. Like I wasn't able to find, I wasn't able to find complete and utter conf confidence within my body. And so I thought, oh, I'll just ignore it. And that's my way of dealing with it. But the more that I think about it, the more I realize that's not actually, that's not how I want to do it. Like that's, that's not how I respond to other things in my life. Glossing over is is fine. There's a difference between glossing over, right, and and um, acceptance. They seem close, but they're not. And so I thought, okay, well, how can I how can I take what I have learned and and do it in a way that has worked for me in other areas? And so that's when the when the details have come into play. Um, and so maybe I am, you know, like looking at my stretch marks, the particular stretch marks that I keep making art out of are the ones on my stomach. And so maybe I'm glossing over the other ones, right? But but by focusing on these ones and I'm giving power to it and um, I was able to find beauty in them just in terms of, you know, whatever means I can, like the idea that they kind of look like, uh, a snail's trail, you know, that like glistening thing because the skin's so thin there uh, and the pattern is kind of cool. And if I uh, move it in this way, it does this. And so that's, yeah, that's the way I've chosen to do things. When you are glossing over something and you've been doing it for a very long time, it's not even glossing in over anymore. It's an unawareness. And that's why art like yours and courses like these and ideas like these are important because it brings awareness to the past parts of ourselves that we've just buried or covered or just just don't we aren't aware of it anymore and permission as well yeah permission is a big one yeah i think that when you're talking i'm thinking a lot about like how i've kind of glossed over my whole body really like i i often think of my body as an inconvenience as in like a necessary evil like if i could just be a brain in a jar i would i would i would totally like i would be first in line to be brain in jar um, <laughs> but it also feels like a disavowal of um of you know what we are who we are um uh, like the kind of like 
the the messy beauty because that's what a body is right it's beautiful but it's messy and i think that a lot of the time maybe that's some where some of those societal standards come from it's trying to make something that is inherently kind of imperfect and messy and trying to make it perfect as it like a body that doesn't poo or you know get ill or that kind of stuff because isn't that what a beauty ideal is it's kind of basically saying well this is a body that you know that doesn't do those kind of things we don't even want you to think about those kind of things because this body is so perfect and that then becomes the beauty standard the ideal the unattainable because everybody's got bodies that you know go to the toilet yeah <laughs> present um <laughs> <laughs> okay, one question that's not serious. What kind of jaw? Oh, like a I've been watching Lockwood and Co and it's got like a real nice vibe and and also like Wednesday, uh you know, like so definitely kind of like a steampunky goth kind of idea of a jar. Not like a peanut not a no, peanut not butter a peanut, jar. Not a peanut butter jar, like not like with a with a turquoise lid. I mean, that sounds like it would be up my street, but no. Okay, thank you Iris. Um I lost my tra- my train of thought, of course, because I had to ask the important question about the jar. <laughs> Crikey. Well, I think most people living in the world today that are not cis white men have been taught so many things about their body and been given so many opinions of their body from, you know, well-meaning or sometimes not well-meaning mothers to family members to even close friends and we help perpetuate all these stupid, stupid things. Um, and, and we're just given so many opinions. And as soon as you go, Oh, I'm quite okay with my body. Right. Then you're also chastised. So you chastise if you're not okay with it, if you are okay with it, if you say good things in public to it, if you say them out loud, um, when the truth is just so much more complicated than that. I remember what I wanted to say because you said cis white male. I always ask myself when I don't have the time to process what I'm feeling about my body in art, who's selling it to me and whose idea is it? And very often it's not my idea. It's not my culture's idea. It's not my country's idea. It is some person who can profit off it. And it's generally for the male gaze. And the the point you made about nobody being happy is so accurate and so true. Why, Tamara, don't you wear black to make yourself look slimmer? And then when I was wearing black, why do you always wear black all the time? You're you're dressing like, oh, okay, wear color. Oh no, don't wear that color. It makes you look too fat. Well, guess what, bitch? I am fat no matter what I wear. Like, that's what I'm going to look like. So it really is, I think, making peace with this idea that no matter what you do as well, nobody's going to be happy. So just like make yourself happy, live in that happiness. Yeah. And is, isn't it really hard as well to like when you're spoon fed that that I can see you're like you have a sense of discomfort and it is a sense of discomfort when you're spoon fed that and you bring it back to art, like it makes it really um, logical that we all seem to struggle and take a long time to try and get to the art that we want to make and the um, the freedom to express what we want to express. Because every time we do something, there's that subconscious voice or the, the little person on your shoulder going like, well, is this, is this right? Is this going to be liked? And I think especially as women, um, we have that much more um and and it bec- it makes it really difficult uh because we're kind of like you know we've been told look for approval and yet then you're going to go into this art sphere where you know sure there are no rules you don't need approval and yet that's like that's so embedded so how do you um make art when on the one hand you want approval and on the other hand you're like well you know this is this amazing medium i don't need approval do you have any thoughts on that kaylee I have a million thoughts on that. Yay. The great thing about this as well is that, um, is this approval, you go into art and you're like, there are no rules, but you realize that there never needed to be rules because you are the person carrying the rules. You're carrying it based on what your junior school teacher told you or what Instagram told you, like so many different rules that you've picked up and kept as if they are your own. And I think 
that annoyingly the way to get through it and to find out what your true authentic rules or um, wants is to just do it anyway and then keep working through that. And when a voice comes up, probably writing it down and then being able to look at it when it's written down black and white, it's so much easier to go, oh, yeah, no, my mom said that to me in grade six. Like, that's not that's not me, me. That's just something someone else said and I took it on. And um, when it comes to ignoring the rules and, and following yourself in that, the easiest way to do that is just to do your favorite things. Start off with your favorite things and all the things that you're waiting for a special day, you do those things. So like if you've got a piece of ephemera that you want for the perfect project, the perfect project is the one that's happening right now and you're probably going to stuff it up, but that's the point and that's fun. Yeah, those reminds me of Tamara saying, fun is my compass. I love this idea of other people's rules and I usually use the word filter because I think I still inside of me have this little kid that wants to listen to rules so when I use the word filters it's it feels a little bit more accessible and something that I can just like and click you know um so what I want to ask and <laughs> Kaylee I know you're the guest but Iris <laughs> Um, how do you approach uh, the canvas when you have all of these shoulds sitting on your shoulder and you actually just want to do something that is not a should or that's against the quotes unquote rules? I think that when I have all these things sitting on my shoulder, that's actually when I don't create. It's It needs to be like I'm a big fan of not uh saying like oh i need perfect circumstances perfect uh you know state of mind etc to create i'm a very big fan of like okay just do something for five minutes and then the five minutes turns into 10 and 15 so i don't want to say like oh well when you're feeling like that don't create and it will come that's true but oh it's difficult because like when but when those voices are too loud i just can't create um and i just have to either trick myself um by um literally just like taking a crayon and like scratching on a page and 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 not having any attachment to it or i just have to wait but i like for myself i know that when i wait i will come back to it but i am not keen on giving it as advice because i know that there are also a lot of people who will take it as a um um, as an excuse to then never do anything and I think that I used to be like that like I used to um, literally go months years without creating anything because I'd get so up in my head and it felt so um, not worth it like you know like why should I be doing these things when other people can do them better that kind of stuff so I can now trust that I will come back to it and you know that my my mood will change um but I think it's a it's a really important thing to check in with yourself with like you know where are you on your journey do you need to put in some strategies or some easy kind of like steps that you could follow that you know can take you out of that if you need to um rather than getting stuck in a non-creating spiral that lasts for much longer than you would be okay with i understand what you mean i have a, a i have to-do lists for different kinds of days and en energies so i have one like it's called tough times never last and that's the day where i give myself permission to just lay in bed if i need to um and these other things come so i get it it's about setting a strategy okay cool um, I do want to say the one thing about advice, though, which is so random, but when you give advice, and I know you don't like giving advice, it's not necessarily that I'm going to take exactly what you're saying and do what you're saying. It's just a different point of view, and it helps me understand what somebody else is doing, and I'll take what's for me and what isn't. But if I latch onto something that you're saying just to stay small or keep small or not do what I need to do, like, that's not on you, hey? That's on me, the person that's listening. So I can't keep on, like, soliciting you for advice. Just give advice. All right. I shall change my personality and start giving advice now. Done. Um, but 
what you just said, I, I love the fact that you have a, uh, what did you just call it? Uh, tough times never last. It's a tough time. <laughs> it's amazing. Like, that's like, I, I'm like, oh, I want to be more like tomorrow. <laughs> oh, I will put uh, in the show notes the guy that, I don't know if people are going to like it, but if you're from South Africa, you will like it. It's a South African guy that does a thing about, he goes, tough times never last. And he makes a horrible sound at the end of it. And it just jars you from whatever you're doing. If you're sitting in, in this moment where you're feeling like, oh, and he makes this weird sound and you're like, well, I'm out of it. Um, and that's why I call it that. But I have a few. I, I have a few to do lists, and one is uh, business pitch, and that's the day that I know that I can, like, get down to it. Um, but it's giving yourself permission, and also having the steps already, because I have a lot of, what is it, um, hard time making decisions, executive dysfunction. Um, so when past tomorrow's laid out the steps, it becomes much more easy for me. Give yourself permission to treat yourself like that. Why not? We think, oh, we're an adult. We'll wake up in the morning. We know what to do. I don't know what to do. That's why I have to read, stretch, put on t-shirts because you know I sleep without a t-shirt. Yeah, that's no, that's a really good point. It's like, uh, the, it's the discrepancy between thinking adults have it all figured out, so I should know what to do, and then if I know what to do, I should be able to do all of these things. Boom, boom, boom. Um, and yet, like, oh my god, like we're just like blobs walking around on this earth, kind of figuring it out, not knowing what the fuck we're doing. So, Kaylee, how do you, um, how do you deal with? these changes in energy like because obviously you run a mega successful business these are my words I don't know if you want to use those words to describe yourself but those are my words to describe you um how do you deal with um how I'm sure sometimes you feel like you're the most badass person and you're killing it and you're like you're so effective and productive and like you know taking over the world and then when on other days you're you might feel like shit how how does that work yeah, the the feeling shit days have come up more and more often the older that I'm getting. And last year I had a lot of health issues and then that they were coming up a lot. Firstly, the the podcast that you guys did on goals was like life changing for me because it put into words the like having different vibes and and going off of those vibes. Because I think inside each of us is this entire family of people um where we've got like the playful self and the wise self and all of that and pulling from these different people is very helpful and i think i also have lists like tamara has lists like i i call them my reset list so it's usually a list for if i am feeling in a particular shade of um unproductive and and kaka and not so good then i've got a list uh, my therapist encouraged me to write it that helps me reset and whether the reset is um a reset where i take a deep breath and i just calm myself you know if that's what i'm needing or if i need to get back into the productivity you know that's usually going to take more than a day or more than an hour um and that's very helpful uh and Pulling information from our wise self is helpful. And, and so when, you know, when tomorrow and I like write these lists, we're pulling it from when we're in that powerful place rather than when we're in the weak place. Uh, and being able to dig in and figure out what I need and what has worked in the past, that's helpful. I journal every day, basically <laughs> day all day because otherwise I would go insane and everything would be in my head instead uh, and and that's helpful for being able to tell what it is I'm eating because when we're when we're in an uncomfortable mood it could be that we need to say we need to stay in that space or it could be that we're our, our insides are shouting out and trying to tell us what we need, but we're just not listening. And so becoming in tune with what you need is so good. And I think that that is, that's what contributes to success in whatever form of success you're looking for is the ability to meet yourself where you're at, when you're there, instead of always fighting against yourself uh, and, and harnessing when you have got that, well, you call it the boss bitch vibes. <laughs> when you've got that like energy where where you're where you know that you're productive then using it to its full capacity instead of ignoring it 
You know what I really love about what you're saying? There's two things. The first thing is, is that you're basically saying you're using, when you feel good, you're actually using that energy to also take care of yourself when you're not feeling good. It's almost like a part of yourself is preemptively creating uh, or taking care of um, the part of yourself that isn't feeling good, you know, at a, at a future date, rather than putting the onus on the part of you that feels like shit to then somehow be able to like dredge themselves out of that feeling, because you know that that's not possible. And you know that that kind of, you know, makes you feel even more, uh, you know, in the shit. So there's that that I really love. And then the, the second thing that I love is that you're basically saying, because Obviously, I I look at you and I admire you and I see you as like a successful person. And I mean successful in a lot of different ways. I don't just mean like the kind of the societal um, interpretation of success. I see you being successful. And and yet you're saying like, okay, well, I also have these down days. And I also, you know, I had problems with my body and my health and stuff like that. And I find that hugely inspiring because you're basically not saying, hey, look at me with my perfect life and um, uh, everything for me is easy. You're saying like, you also go through these things. And I think it's a it's a big um, lie that we tell ourselves sometimes, especially when we don't feel like we've made it. And then we look at people that we admire and then we tell ourselves ourselves this kind of uh fairy tale that like well oh well they have this and that and you know for them life is easy they don't get like negative inner voices or get down in the dumps they they don't get annoying colds um they don't uh you know they've got a really nice uh studio space which you do <laughs> but it's like, yes, you have all of those things, but you're still also a human being and you're struggling with the same thing. So I think that's really, really helpful um, to kind of know, um, to kind of feel like that whatever level you're at, whatever you are, your current struggles are, whatever you are trying to achieve, um, that's your journey. But we're all kind of experiencing the same uh, struggles and we all have to figure out similar things in order to um you know, become the best version of ourselves. Yeah, it's new points of reference. It's collecting points of reference to compare yourself to in a healthy way. Mm. And you mentioning this thing about being sick, I said to you, we're all over 20 here, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for asking. <laughs> um, m my partner and I, are we're in our mid-30s now. And I said... It's becoming so hard, but I we were blaming ourselves. Like, our, our, yes, fitness matters and stuff, but it was all about blaming ourselves. But when Ira said to me, like, she's sick again and she's she's been kind of having a tough time with her health, I view Iris outwardly as a very healthy person. But it helped me because it felt like, oh, geez, okay, it's not just me because I like to just lay on my, my back and, and funnel lays into my mouth. It's also because... We're both getting old together, you and I. And Kaylee, you can come in too. So I really think those points of reference and honesty and authenticity is so important. And that's why this community and speaking openly and honestly is important. Because it gives women like me, who don't have a lot of interaction with other people or who come from very closed cultural practices, um, to get those things that we need to understand that this is fine. This is how it's supposed to be. I'm 35 and it's okay if my back is sore three out of seven days. I think something that our generation figured out, um, you know, between we're all millennials, right? Yeah. yeah. Between yeah. millennials and like the older people is that the hack to mental, some kind of mental stability is to actually feel your feelings and I think it's as soon as we're fighting against those feelings that things are going to go a bit rubbish um, or you're going to feel your feelings at some stage. And so whether you feel them now or later, uh, you're going to feel them. Uh, and my therapist taught me that and that's been very helpful. And so that when I am having a bad day, I allow myself to have a bad day. I'm not going to, I'm not like, there's no, well, there is a voice in me and I try and be gentle with it, but you know, the voice going, okay, you need to get shit done today. You need to get the shit done. Who cares if you're sick? Um, who cares if you're tired? Who cares if X, Y, Z, you got to just put that aside and get shit done. And that's not true. We don't have to do that. Like, you know, none of us is a doctor, so it's fine. We don't need to show up for work or need to show up in whatever way. 
yeah, so just going through that is helpful. And also art is such a good teacher and I keep applying what I learned in art in other areas. And in this case, I'm talking about focusing on the process and in the middle and the messy middle and just allowing it to be messy and trusting that it'll be somewhat fine on the other side. And if it's not, then you'll deal with it then too. Like it's all fine. And I don't know my, the thing, some, a phrase that I always repeat to myself is I'm okay. Things are okay. I don't need things to be great. Just, they just need to be okay. Neutral. Yeah. My, my therapist says something similar uh, about feeling your feelings. He says, um, if you don't have your feelings, your feelings end up having you. Yeah. That's a good one. Okay, I'm so I when it comes to feeling my feelings, I'm I'm still a newbie and I'm okay with that. That's fuck it, it's the place I'm in. But how do you sometimes make peace? The resistance I have with feeling my feelings is because okay, I, you answered it already. Can I say my question and then say how you answered it? <laughs> the the resistance I have with feeling my feelings is this feeling of sadness and I feel that when sadness comes that it might never leave. But it's have, having that faith that actually it's messy in the middle and it's going to be okay at the end, like tough times never last. Well, there's there's an asterisk to all of this, of course, because if you're not, um, I get depression too. So I know, you know, you like, you know, if, if you're feeling sad and you know that you're on your way to being depressed, it's a different feeling to sadness, then there should be some action taken if you can, you know, before it gets worse and worse. Um, I'm just saying this now because my partner's currently going through depression. And that's why I know <laughs> telling him, oh, it's okay. Just feel depressed. But, like, it's not unhelpful for him. No, yeah. No. Don't do dangerous. That's a dangerous action. But I think that is why I'm afraid of being sad as well. Because when I went through depression and I didn't get any help, I just balls to the wall, doing everything I needed to do because I was the best. Um that scary feeling in the morning of just not being able to wake up uh I was just I just thought I was feeling sad and I was just processing uh childhood years of grief but it was a chemical imbalance as well so yes you're 100% right please uh, not a doctor although I should have been yeah no sadness is not I can't speak on that one particularly because I'm also terrified of it that's not yeah same I'm like that that what you said Tamara about like how you are afraid uh that it will never go away and that is definitely the thing that subconsciously keeps me away from it because I feel like I have a lifetime of it and like why do I want to open that bag of worms you see thank you for saying that because I am so utterly convinced not because of the way you look but because of the way you behave, that you're sitting in your shit like twenty. I know you don't. You do it as much as you can, not twenty four seven. But like, I feel like sadness is not a problem for you. And when you say that, because I have a closer. Of course, I admire Kaylee, but I have a closer relationship with you. I feel Kaylee can do everything, but with you, I have a more real, realistic <laughs> kind of point of view. And it feels so good to hear you say that. That's why I hugged myself because fuck I'm scared (laughs) but that's that I think that's why my paintings cry because I don't like you might look at my paintings and go like oh you're like you're probably like a really angry person and you're like expressing your anger or you're expressing your sadness and like you know like you probably cry all the time I'm like no fuck I, I, I don't cry like I wish I cried like I cry at movies I cry at books and stuff but like I mean like the real crying for yourself and your own sadness I don't do that like I can't like I'd love to like I, but the the truth is obviously I wouldn't love to because if I truly subconsciously would love to then I'd be doing it uh, but no there's a large part of myself that obviously does not want to do that and therefore doesn't isn't able is incapable you know I learned at a very young age that um expressing my grief and crying would make my mom and dad sad Um, And they were just as sad as I was that my brother had passed on, but I was adding to that level of sadness. And then it grew into just this, this container, you know, the only time, and now I'm an adult, when I really cry, I still cannot do it with other people. I do it alone. And then I have this voice that comes into my head and it says, you're a Sagadevan and Sagadevans don't cry. And somebody must have said that to me when I was a kid and it's still in my head. 
And then I'm like, I don't cry. And the other day I was like, well, fuck, I'm not going to be one much longer because I'm getting married soon. And what am I going to do then? And it was this like really weepy, like childish conversation with myself. But like hearing you say that you can't cry, like to me, that's such a like, when when I say I'm an artist and I'm feeling my feelings, like I think people think in that way that I cry quite often. And but I also have that same problem. We can be not crying buddies. Kaylee, are you going to join no, but I can make you cry if you want. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the gloves are coming off. No, I like to cry. Not usually easily and also not with other people. Um, well, it's an interesting thing for me to like think about, actually. I don't really think about it. Oh, and I don't, I always feel uncomfortable when I talk about like masculine and feminine because I know that I'm not like well versed in, in everything. Because like I say, I feel like I only recently... Oh, okay. Just take it as it is. Yeah. I just recently became like a woman. Um, When I was working, I didn't feel like I could be feminine or female or exhibit in any way that I was a woman. I still had to wear makeup, but I would make sure that it was, I was still <laughs> looking like what I thought they wanted me to look like, whatever, long story. Um, And I feel that now when I cry, I feel sometimes that I need like this additional like masculine energy. And my partner has been that for me where it's not necessarily that I'm crying in his arms, but he creates that space for me to cry. And he's like, it's not that crying is feminine, but it's just kind of like, Tam, I'm here. If you need me to come to you, I'm here. But if you want to sit alone in your room and cry and scream and wail your lungs out, like you're welcome to do it. But this is like a safe space for you. And the container for me for grief and expressing sadness and mourning has grown a bit, but it's still still scary. I think I, I said this somewhere else, but I read a thing where grief is like a button in a very tiny box, and like you're you're the ball and you keep on hitting it, but as time goes on, the the way of you hitting it and feeling that intense pain um gets less and less likely that you when you do hit it, you will feel that intense pain, but you might not hit it every day versus when the container was smaller. Um, and I feel like now that my container has started expanding because of art, it gets easier, but it's still, again, I keep on saying that I'm afraid. Uh, yeah, it's still scary. I'm going to stop talking now because I feel <laughs> self-conscious. Don't feel self-conscious. There's no judgment here. Uh, Iris, no judgment? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just checking it. Kaylee. Take us back, Iris. <laughs> yes, Kaylee, can I ask you a question? Um, how do you... Kaylee, how do you put feelings into your art? Do you put feelings into your art? Mm, I do. It wouldn't. It wouldn't really be something that goes. I am sad. Um, but if I look back at it, I can. It might not be to other people evident, but it's evident to me. Going through body of art, one of the pieces that I made right at the end. I think it's in the last lesson. Uh, it's, it's a picture of me and then <clears throat> collage elements around it. And it looked so much like a piece that I had made in the past. And so I was looking at them and I knew that in the piece that I had made now, so last year, what happened was I had all these hormone, this hormone weirdness with my body. And then by the end of the year, it turned out one of my ovaries was completely dead and the other one had a massive cyst on. And so they took the cyst and one of the ovaries out. And I've got no attachment to those ovaries because it wasn't really functioning <laughs> anyway. So yeah. you're over, you're over your ovaries. I'm over it. <laughs> but um, the surgery and stuff, it did allow me to see my body in a very, like a little bit in awe of it and in awe of the healing that it's able to do. And I, and after the operation, I was completely torn apart by German doctors that really don't care about what anything looks like. They're just, they're just there for the functionality. And I remember looking at myself and just going like, whoa, this is crazy. And then somehow by on its own, my body completely healed itself. And that was, you know, that was a, a big journey for me. Um, and so it was like, it was one of lightness, right? And so the picture that I had made, I could feel that in the picture. And the artwork that it reminded me of was one from a few years ago, um, maybe 10 years ago. Wow. Uh, it was the same. I had used the same technique, 
but the picture was me crying um and but all abstractly completely abstractly i didn't cry and take a photo of myself and use it in my art uh, which you can i'm not laughing i'm laughing because if i did that it would be ridiculous but um because then i had just been told that i was going to be infertile uh, and i was processing that and so that's the way i do feelings the previous one, the one about sad things, was actually a pretty happy piece. It had happy colors. It had uh, bright pinks, uh, and it looked kind of cool. And then this one was maybe a bit more moody, even though it was about something happier. And I think what's nice is being able to look back and being able to tie art together and and know how I was feeling in that moment. And I always think that you know, scrapbooking is documenting events, whereas art journaling is documenting feelings. And looking back at the feelings that you've felt over time is so much more interesting than, oh, we went to um, South Africa for holiday, you, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Can I bring it round to something a bit more practical? Um, I would love to know, obviously you've put together this really big course um of like I think it's like is it 11 videos or something like that probably something completely different 19 I can't remember a lot okay it's like it's like loads of videos and but like not just loads of videos it's like lots of different topics and you're looking at the body um through the lens of like how we look at art with the different kind of uh you know like form value contrast that kind of stuff um how how do you approach creating a course like that Mm. interesting so i've had i've been exploring my body through art for quite a while i started doing that after my son uh, and i think anyone that's carried a human inside of them can attest to the fact that it completely changed your body your nipples i just like my nipples have never been so many different colors in such a short period of time it's insane um stretch marks different stretch marks new ones <laughs> Elliot asked me the other day I love him he says mama why does your why do your boobs look like fried eggs just straight <laughs> like that <laughs> I didn't tell him you you that you are why um so I've been exploring that and trying to understand it and I think my art journal has always been a place where I figure out what I'm feeling Uh, And so, and then I knew that I wanted to encourage other people to do it too, because I know what it had done for me in all the different times uh, and journeys of my body that I've been on. So, you know, the, the body of acceptance or I needed acceptance in my body. And so I sought that out in my art journal. I needed um, all of my body or, you know, like all the things that I needed, I would go searching in my journal. So I knew that I wanted other people to do it and I think that the the idea someone somewhere I read about someone's body of art and I was like oh okay and I was a little bit disappointed that it was just a body of art and not an actual human body and I thought okay well I can create a human body of art and then I was just and then I thought about the uh, different aspects of art and I was like oh, well, you know, like my body's got a lot of texture to it and uh, being able to look at my body's textures is much more interesting than just looking at my body, judging good, not good. Uh, And so that's how it came together. There's also, I think for me, class creating, and I'm sure for you guys too, is a very, very creative process. And uh, it's there's there's a lot of things that come on into the class and a lot that gets left out. So one of the things that I left out, I wanted to also bring it back into our nervous systems and then it just started getting convoluted. And so it would have been a cool avenue to explore maybe later, uh, but for now just focused on that. And each lesson is really just an invitation to explore that. And so my way of teaching is very loose and not, I am now going to draw a body. This is how you draw a human body. It is more, this is, this is the, the, this is the idea and this is what value in art is. 
And so this is how I interpreted that and how I looked at my body and, and saw the different values in it. And this is the art that I made. And now you can do that. And if you wanted to use some of the techniques, I did fine. But mostly it's just an invitation and an encouragement. Mm, I love that, an invitation. Mm, they are called, I specifically called each lesson an invitation rather than a lesson or what other like a prompt or it's an invitation because you can also realize no I don't actually really want to look at my body in terms of shape I don't want to look at my body in terms of um patterns or ill that's not one of them textures or whatever mm. I think that's really important especially when because I think what we're talking about and what we do is we make our own art and we're also teachers and as teachers you're trying to like you're trying to facilitate something and so often the format and I understand why the format exists but I find feel so frustrated by it the format is often here this is what I made now I'm going to teach you how to make that but when we are in the business of facilitating people to make their own art and when you said like you know art journaling is a practice of um of expressing your feelings or documenting your feelings through art then then obviously you can't uh, somebody else can't make the same thing as you because they have their own feelings, they have their own journey, they have their own way of relating to it. So I love um, kind of reframing it and calling it an invitation because that way people can really take what they need from it themselves and get closer to that expression of their own art and their own feelings, whether they use a similar visual language as what you are demoing or whether they're using something different, but they're taking the idea, they're taking the invitation and they're kind of running with it to see where they end up for themselves. And I, I really love that because that's, that's, I feel like that's a really important aspect of teaching um, that especially in an online world is very complicated because the online world and the teaching that we do is so linear. It's so like, this is the beginning of the video. This is the middle of the video. This is the end. I need some pictures to show you what it is that we've created or are going to create. And it's just like, it's such a, oh, it's so antithetical. But like, so I, yeah, I love this idea of an invitation, kind of a small step closer to how I think it should be. I think um, this is a conversation we had before, Iris, and I, you and I were thinking about how do we actually do something when we were going through our, our mentorship? Um, how would we do something that isn't linear? And this is really such an inspiring idea for me. First of all, it looks so slick. Let's just, I wanted to tell you that. But what I also want to say is, you have to know your audience and you know that your audience are now in the meat of this art practice. And the meat is to get in touch with your feelings. But in the beginning, when somebody's just coming and they want to taste the bread or whatever, it is making a pretty picture. And then they need the step by step. Here's what it is, because it's so much less intimidating to make something that looks good then um, investigate your feelings. So I understand that and I understand why it exists. But this here for me has been really inspiring in terms of where I want to go. And I love this this word that you used because for me, it's a reframe. If I give somebody an invitation versus this is your lesson, one of them feels very like rod and stick and the other one feels like like an invitation, like a hug. So I'm very inspired by this this concept of taking what you want, truly taking what you want and leaving the rest and hmm, I know that a lot of obviously a lot of work went into what you did but the one thing I wanted to ask you is what motivates you on the good days and the bad days like your overall motivation your your why I don't know why I'm making a triangle your your why at the end of the day and I hear what you're saying about getting people in touch and this healing power that was there for you but um, is it something a little bit more intelligent than what I'm saying? Oh, I wish it was more intelligent. The only reason I do this is because I'd be like puking if I didn't. Like, um, it's the same reason I journal because if I'm not journaling, then it's staying here and I can't, like, I get uncomfortable if something stays inside of me. This stupid body of art. I am currently at the worst relationship with my body right now. Like, this is the worst time for me to be sharing pictures of my like naked body. Of course, I've like 
A curated naked um, body, yes. Is the- cur- curated. Like, I'm not actually, don't buy the course just to see me naked. You will <laughs> oh, okay. be so disappointed. Oh, well, you've just lost a customer. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the worst I'm feeling about my body. And this is like the, maybe not the biggest, but like one of the biggest I've been. And like, and, and I don't feel, I don't feel in my body. Like, I've got a massive cut at the moment. I've got, it's just not my body so I would have much preferred to rather come out with this course when um I don't know like I'm super tan and my hair is straight and um I've been to the gym three times a day for the last year I don't know um that would have been much easier for me but that's so boring and then also I want to encourage people to show up when they're in a mess too um and you know some of the lessons it was a big step for me to record without makeup and um without having done my hair or like you know done it's as uncurated as I could because um I wanted to show up vulnerably so that people would be vulnerable with themselves and so the reason body of art is coming out now is just because I'm tired of saying later 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 to myself because that's so uninteresting when you wait until things are perfect and my reason in general is not an intelligent one and it's probably self-serving it's just that I need to release what's inside and I want other people to release what's inside and I want it all to be shared and I want to take small tiny imperfect actions that encourage people to be a lot more imperfect and a lot more messy middly in their art thank you <laughs> yeah what do you say thank you i wanted to make a comment a side comment the fact that you have put so much of intention into showing up uh, without straightening your hair or whatever other things you might feel you need to do usually actually makes your course body of art a body of art <laughs> because it's like an it's like an it, like an installation piece you know like that kind of like so much of thought even the way I show up is going to be in line with this course that's a really it's a very cool concept yeah and I did have a lot of freak out where you know I messaged my friend Vanessa who I know she does a lot of exploring of her own body and her art and so I messaged her and I was like please remind me that this is fine like <laughs> That that's fine that I'm doing it. And you go through all of this processing and overthinking and freaking out. And I asked, you know, like I had made the sales page and I said to my husband, okay, I just want to let you know there is a naked body of me there. It's not, you know, no, there are no nips, but, you know, it's an, it's my body there. Um, do you mind? You know, because technically he's got like 50-50 share, right? <laughs> Um, and he's so great because he was just like, I don't know, I don't care. And he said, and um, he reminded me, it's just a body. Why are we so, why have we got so many attachments to it? And that's kind of what this whole course is, is that it's just a body. It's a freaking beautiful, um, the way it functions is insane, sometimes badly insane, sometimes amazing insane, but um, it's just a body. It's fine. It's the same with our art. It's just in the end of the at the end of the day, it's just art. It's just paper. It's just materials. Um, we can attach meaning to it, but that's that's boring. Is to get all these all of society's meaning towards it rather than our own. Mm, definitely, yeah. There's a thought I always try and bring into my life, and it's a spiritual practice, but you don't have to make it spiritual. And it says, I am not the body, I am not even the mind. And that is such a releasing thing for me on, because you're right, it's just a body, we formed attachments to it and what it means. We've given it meaning. Yeah. And have you ever watched, something I had to keep reminding myself, has you, have you ever watched an art video where you look at the person and you're like, well, she didn't brush her hair today. No, you're not no. interested in that. <laughs> you're interested in the art that she's helping you make. Uh-huh. Yeah. But somehow... I don't, yeah, not for all of us. I'm not speaking for all of us. Okay, for me, when I look at myself, when I edit myself having made a lesson, 
I'm like, oh, Kaylee, you could have at least like rubbed that eyeliner off or like you could have uh, closed your button or like become more presentable, which is the most ridiculous thing. That's why all my vlogs start with me fixing my yeah. hair because I'm like, oh my God, I'm seeing my face. No, this is not the face. That I should have done this. I should have done that. And one of my favorite bits in one of your vlogs is this whole bit about a hairbrush and brushing your hair. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's nice when you give yourself, you're just like, oh, I'm an artist. Artists don't brush their hair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think if anybody is looking for some, I don't know, permission or advice, I go, I'm on some of my vlogs with my gown, my hair, scans, everything, my teeth are not in. The reason I do it that way. Your teeth are not in. I haven't seen those vlogs. No, man. I. I... (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay, my teeth are in. Um, The reason I do that is because I thought if I start showing up, as someone who is presentable and made up, one day somebody's going to get the fright of their life when I come here and I show them. And I have never got, except from my from my mom, I haven't got any like negative feedback about my creased clothes. And I have a problem with I'm mean, this horrible water in Europe. Yes, Europe, feel attacked. It's given me like hair issues and scalp issues. And I sometimes have like little like white specks and I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> cool. Uh, if you're going to look at my video and what you're going to see is those three white specks on the sweater I wear all the time, then like this is not the place for you as well. So just kind of remember, it's a very hard thing to keep up all the time, especially if you don't do it to always have your hair straight and put on makeup or whatever the beauty standard of the day is. Um, so just show up. Show up as ugly as you are because you're ugly. <laughs> oh, it's about it's about show. No, it's about showing up with ease because yeah. this is the thing. Like I think um, some people like how they like they like straightening their hair or they like whatever. It's part of like their ease routine because they feel like themselves. But to me, it's not like to me putting on makeup feels like an effort. That's like really me doing something kind of extra that is out of the kind of the norm, out of the comfort zone, out of the feeling of ease. Very, very occasionally it's not, but most of the time it is. And then it's kind of like, well, just show up the way that is easiest for you because then you can bring your best self. Your best self is not the one that has makeup on if that drains you of energy. Mm. That's a good word. That's a good word to use, ease. Mm. Um, It's my word of the year. (gasps) Oh, well, definitely. It's like having the dirty house, right? Mm-hmm. Then other people can have their dirty houses because no one actually cares. Everyone knows that like your house isn't perfectly spotless at all times. Who cares? Mm, exactly. Boring. My mom cares. Yeah, yeah. That's my- <laughs> Besides our moms. <laughs> so um, I'd love to I'd love to wrap things up um, by asking you, Kaylee, um very antithetical to our podcast do you have any advice for our listeners just advice general (laughs) don't run with scissors yeah any advice art advice life advice advice about like how to cook your favorite meal i don't know oh so it doesn't have to be specific whatever you would like to give advice on i'm excited about this give me a second you can cook your mushrooms in water before you add any olive oil or fats. And, and what does that do to them? <laughs> because when you're cooking your mushrooms, it's changed my life. When you cook your mushrooms, like they're going to soak in whatever the, you've given them. So if you've given them like a whole bunch of oil, they're going to immediately soak it in and the pan's going to get dry and you're going to have to add more water anyway. And then you're just going to get like really oily mushrooms. But you can totally cook them in water and then like add near the end for flavor interesting i'm gonna try this (laughs) i'm not i'm not gonna lie ira stop lying (laughs) (laughs) this has broken my brain it's really good it's really good but oily mushrooms is not a problem that i've ever had I have a watery mushroom problem. Like that's why I'm because so they, they have a lot of they have a lot of water in them. Mushrooms. Why not themselves. always dry? The pan is really? always dry. Interesting. Maybe it's German mushrooms. Oh, am I cooking the wrong? 
Maybe I'm cooking the psychedelics instead. Okay. <laughs> oh, wrong podcast. Um, so, Kaylee, do you want to um, tell people where they can find you? Is there anything you'd like to plug, promote? I mean, we've been promoting your course uh, for the whole podcast episode, so maybe that or something else. Uh, let us let, let our listeners know uh, where they can find the glorious you. Oh, the glorious me. Um, Instagram, Kaylee Gray, with a bunch of E's in there, Gray with an E, and Get Messy Art Journal. Um, and I would like to change my advice. <laughs> I think we just make a lot of art put Iris and Tamara on in the background to keep you company uh, and they're going to help you even if you're making really bad art to just have fun while you're making it thank you Awesome. Thank you so much for being our guest. Um, and obviously all of these links we're going to make clickable for you in the show notes so that, you know, you can go and uh, not say like, I didn't know where to put the E in Kaylee Gray. No, you're going to have no excuse. You're going to click the link um, and you're going to follow Kaylee because she's amazing. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for being our first. <laughs> oh, that's an honor. Thank you so much for listening to this amazing episode with Kaylee Gray. We are thrilled with all of the completely brain exploding things that she said. And we have uh, summed them all up for you very neatly in the key takeaways. Let's get into them. Takeaway number one. Society tells us all the ways in which our body is too much or not enough. We can reclaim our connection and relationship to our bodies through art. Give it permission to be art itself, to see it as an artist, to live in it as an artist. Number two, we can look at the details of our body, both outside and inside, as a way of starting a dialogue and connection with our body and appreciating it. Number three, combining art and the body can help bring awareness to the parts of ourselves that we've buried or covered over. Number four, when we have negative feelings about our body, it can be helpful to try and identify whose idea is it. Is it yours or is it an echo of society or a company that profits when you feel insecure or not enough? Number five, art provides a playground where there are no rules, but you might still encounter rules that you internalized and carry with you that aren't actually your own. If you'd like a reframe, try using the word filter instead of rules and explore that. Number six, Use all the things you're saving for a special day. The perfect project is the one that's happening right now. Number seven. When you feel good, you can use that energy to put strategies in place to preemptively take care of yourself for when you're not feeling good. Number eight. The hack to mental health stability is to feel your feelings. Whether you feel them now or later, you're going to feel them. Number nine. If you'd like a reframe for taking a lesson, think of it as an invitation instead. Number 10. When we show up vulnerable or in a messy way, we give others permission to be vulnerable with themselves. And number 11. It's about showing up with ease. When you show up the way that is easiest for you, you can bring your best self. Thank you so much for being with us for this inaugural episode of season three. We can't wait to share the rest of our guests with you in the coming episodes. Please take a moment to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It really helps us get into and stay in the top charts, which is super helpful for people discovering our podcast. And hey, if you've got a friend who you think would enjoy this podcast, please let them know about it. Tell them what you think. All right. See you in the next episode. And here are the key takeaways. One, cook your mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs>